What sort of advice would you give to a, a, a young trail walker, a young instructor, or guide in a program? They really wanted to just do the best work that they could do. Well, I speak from knowledge on that. You have to be willing and active in doing what's right. And you have to do, do, have a personality that will teach you what's right. Or you'll be able to learn what's right when it's been presented to you. And uh, it's an individual thing. Each, each, is, each trail walker in a program can be a living example to a young person. Now, we visited with two or three trail walkers that work for Anasazi, or that do work for Anasazi over there. And I don't know who they are. I've never met them before. But I try to look in each one of them's face, and I can tell whether, you know, whether they've got a really good chance of making it or not. Most of these guys do just fine. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they're good looking, and it's not because they're not scraggly. It's because they have integrity and a belief system that backs them up with it. And that's what, that's the ones that succeed. What was that question? You answered it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, before you mentioned, uh, you know, the students, they say, this is the hardest thing I ever did, right? Yeah. And uh, what's the hardest thing you ever did? Uh, hardest thing? Mm-hmm. That's pretty hard to answer because when it's hard, well, at the time when it's so hard, you, you're living it. And there's that moment that you, if you were to ask yourself that, you'd say, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. The hardest thing, I believe, is to remember that and appreciate it afterwards when you're living in society. Uh, I don't know how to explain that, but I, th I think a lot of your, a lot of the listeners here will, uh, they'll know what you mean. It's, it's hard to bring the, the value forward. You can't bring the value forward fully, mm -hmm. and that is the most frustrating part of it. The hardest thing, I think, is to see the children suffer by their own hand, usually, mm -hmm. and, and feel like you want to help them with something and, the, and then hope for the opportunity in the moment to come, mm -hmm. and then find out that it doesn't come, it doesn't come, it doesn't come. And you sometimes you go home thinking that you completely failed with that young person, that, they're, that you know, it's your fault, but only to find out that they succeed and excel years later. And then come back to you and say you did it. You know, you, it was you. It was your experience mm -hmm. that you had with me that made the difference. Yeah. The start. Yeah. And I just miss the kids. <laughs> They're like they become like family to you. And you you want to you want to know what they're doing and how they're doing. When you see that they're not doing what you wish they would be doing, you have to back up and say, now wait a minute, just because I'm a doctrinal person, that doesn't mean that if they're not doing what I think, then they're not any good. That's not true. What's true is that they are God's children and they know what's right and they know what's wrong. And those experiences come out later in their lives when they get older and begin to realize those mistakes and begin to realize that they need to let go of some things and it becomes easier and easier for them to re reconcile with their families. And that kind of thing. I've had a lot of students who told me that it took them 30 years after they went on the trail to finally realize what was going on and change their lives sufficiently to make it work. That's thrilling. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I had a young man walk up to me. We were doing a golf tournament to raise money for Anastasi. And uh, when it was all over with, I noticed that this guy had been working around as kind of a janitor, sweeping the sidewalks and keeping things in order there at the golf course. And I didn't recognize him at all. He's an adult, older adult. And uh, when he spotted me one day, realized it was me, he came running over and he says, you Larry Olson? I said, yes. He said, do you remember me? And I said, no. He says, I was on your very first long survival trip before you called it Youth Leadership 480 out of those survival skills. And uh, he says, 
I was one of the nine boys from the local high school that you took out for 25, 24 days in the wilderness to test all the things you wanted to know about doing a program like this. And I began to recognize he's kind of a tall, gangly guy. Mm -hmm. And he, then he told me his name, I can't remember it now, but uh, he says, I want you to know that that was the most significant experience in my life. Not that I haven't had good experiences since, because, but that's what led me to those good experiences. And he wanted to thank me. And became a good friend, wrote me a couple letters, and uh, maintained contact even to this day. And uh, well, I guess it's been four or five years now since I've heard from him. But he was successful, not highly paid, but he was successful. He had a wife and a family, and they were happy, and they were doing what's right. And he was one of the most rascally kids I ever worked with. <laughs> he had a mutiny, and they tried to mutiny on the trail, and when we hit a road, we were going to catch a ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a group that was trailing along behind us, and, and uh, I was talking with him, trying to get him to convince him to you know, not do this. Here comes this pickup with some of the other kids that I left down the trailways to catch up with these in the back of that pickup. And they were all at mutiny. They were headed home too. <laughs> the cowboy that had them thought I, they'd been telling him some real bad stories, you know. Mm -hmm. So he thought things were really bad. He was gonna save these kids. And uh, <laughs> stood there for a long while and talked with him and the man became less and less certain that he was gonna rescue him. And finally he said, uh, the kids in the back, he said, get out of my pickup. And they all jumped out. We sat down on that road. It was a bird trail road, hardly any traffic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we sat down on that road in the dust and discussed the whole thing for about a half hour. And I said, you know, we've talked long enough on this. We don't have to therapize this thing. Let's just go finish this program. And they all got up and silently trudged on. And we went down into the water pocket fold and all went through that area and up to Lake Powell and out on the Powell, clear on up around and through uh, past the Escalante River, or to the Escalante River, and then up upstream to the bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, by that time, the course was over, but they had a great experience, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them remember that. Yeah, nice way to finish on the Escalante yeah. there, go up to the bridge. Yeah, but uh, one incident that I, uh, I liked it, what happened, but it could have been problematic. I had a gun, and I was the only person with them. In those days, that was the way we did it. Just took a big group and we went out. And I had, usually they had a firearm with them just for protection. I had a gun, which was a sawed off 22. It was made into a pistol, mm -hmm. single shot 22, and bolt action. We still got it. And, uh, they said so they they never thought about it at the time. The kids did, but I knew the cowboy did. Because the reason he turned around and told the kids to get out of that pickup was when I pulled my coat back and I saw that he saw that gun. <laughs> I was ready to say, you know, you can't take these kids from me. They're my charge, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'll protect them any way I can. So when he saw that, I didn't have to say another word. That was kind of a different world back then. Different now, world, now different I, rules. I didn't realize you took out high school kids before you did the BYU 480. It was called... Uh, all the way to... All the way club program. All the way. All the way. All right. And I did it at BYU, sponsored it. Mm -hmm. uh, Provo High School provided the kids. These were kids who had all been kicked out. And... Uh, there were nine of them. All the way to adventure. Okay. All the way to adventure. You might, you might could find that. Mm -hmm. at, yeah. Mike might have it. Mike Merchant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you just did the one trip? Just one time. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted to evaluate it, look at it. These kids got back in school. They did fine. Most of them. Mm -hmm. They did just fine. 
And then that's why BYU decided to do the They decided to let me go ahead and do it, yeah. <laughs> they didn't know what to provide me. They didn't know how to do anything. They, they were as dead in the water as I was without having experience, you know. <laughs> But, uh, so where, where did you get the idea to take a young group out like that? Oh, I learned that from Outward Bound. Mm -hmm. Outward Bound came into the United States just a couple of years before that. They had a Colorado school. They had one back in the east somewhere. And I read a little bit about them. And I had a... I was still going to school, in fact. And I, but I was teaching night classes and outdoor survival skills with my book. And uh, I decided to do a little research on this Outward Bound program, see what they do. And then they, they got into Life magazine. And I read that article and I said, boy, how do they take that many kids out at once? You know, I've been taking kids out for day, day treks mm -hmm. from BYU We'd, in our survival class. We'd go out and dig roots for a day. But I never had uh, any thought of taking out expeditions that of that magnitude and staying out that long. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it could be done. So I called Outward Bound and I said, can I come over and, uh, and uh, no, I didn't call him. By golly, I never did call him. They called me. I got a call from uh, the guy that ran the Colorado school. He says, we've read your book and we want you to come out and teach those skills to our kids on the trail. I said, sure. So I was going to be a teacher that went out in mm -hmm. different groups and taught them stuff. I got there, and they were short on staff. And they had two busloads of kids from the riot centers in Chicago. They'd all been picked up off the streets, charged with some, one crime or another. And then the judge told them they had two choices, go to jail or go to uh, Colorado. They had two Greyhound busloads full of those guys. They dumped them off there, and they were so short on staff, they decided to hire me on to do the staff rather than teach. So I was given a group of nine kids, and we lit, went in several groups of nine, traveled together. We went all throughout the Rocky Mountains, up real high altitudes. The thing I learned was that it could be done. You know, these guys had the good training and safety and that kind of thing. So I thought, well, I'm going to try to do that at BYU. I knew the desert, so I'm mm -hmm. going to make a desert version of this. And I was not impressed with their curriculum at all. It was very yell in the face type thing. But I just forgot that and said, I'm going to do it my way. And it just bloomed. Like, that's how it got started. Mm -hmm. Again, I just took that one extra little experience to get that confidence to go ahead and try it. The Primitivus Project is made possible by the generous sponsorship of Wingate Wilderness Therapy. Wingate Wilderness Therapy is a premier wilderness therapy program for troubled teens and young adults that offers hope and healing. Designed for both troubled teens and young adults, Wingate offers two distinctly separate wilderness programs addressing the needs of two very different age groups. Wingate operates from the understanding that change comes from the inside out, not the outside in. To learn more about Wingate, visit WingateWildernessTherapy.com or call 1-800-560-1599. Please subscribe to this channel to ensure you don't miss any episodes of the project. New videos will be loaded every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please like the videos and share them with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the trail.